Hey, you have Patrick Finoro here, co-founder at Vetted Biz, excited to have on Rod Wheeler, who's a, a franchisee, entrepreneur, food security consultant. Going to talk a little bit about his experience with the Ace Hardware brand, as well as the Ace Handyman Services brand, his other entrepreneurial ventures, and what he's looking at in the next couple of years in the franchising space. So Rod, thanks so much for joining. Well, thank you, Patrick. It's a pleasure to uh, be with you. And it's always an honor to talk about franchising. And obviously that's the hot topic of the day. A lot of folks are looking at franchising. So hopefully I can bring some value to our discussion. So we both grew up um, in the DC area and you worked um, in the, the police department for 20 plus years as a detective. And I remember going into concerts like in the nineties where it was it was rough and our parents were really worried, you know, certain streets and uh, it's a very different DC these days when I go back and visit. But tell me, I guess, a little bit about your, your, your experience serving. Sure, absolutely. Well, yeah, I did serve with the DC Police Department for many, many years. Um, now, just to go back a little bit, I'm originally from Ohio. So I grew um, up in Cleveland, Ohio, and I did my undergraduate at The Ohio State University, right? <laughs> And then I moved to DC to go to graduate school. And this is kind of how people always ask me, how did you make the transition from law enforcement to what I'm doing now? And let me just kind of give you the short version of that, right? So while in graduate school, I decided to join the police department because like any other college student, I had to put myself through school. So I became yeah. a cop and I winded up staying there longer than I had anticipated because I was promoted to homicide as a homicide detective. And this was during the nineties, Patrick, you were probably a baby back then. But, uh, <laughs> you know, the streets of D.C. was pretty tough and pretty rough back then, but it was a good experience. And I did that for a number of years. Now, right after 9-11, I decided to transition more onto the federal side because of 9-11 and what, you know, everybody remembers what happened on 9-11 and I was here in D.C. So I decided to start looking at our food industry, food and agricultural industry in terms of terroristic activity. And that's what I've been doing for a number of years. So. I focus on protecting the food supply, helping companies protect the food supply from intentional contamination. Now, how did I go from police department to food supply to Ace Hardware, right? I mean, you know, the story gets better. The story gets better. You've got to stay tuned, right? <laughs> so right, the, right around the beginning of COVID, and everyone, all of your listeners, all of your viewers can relate to this. Right around the beginning of COVID, everything started slowing down in terms of travel. So I was traveling a lot for my food defense business, but because of COVID, all travel pretty much came to an abrupt halt for everybody, right? So what I did, I started thinking back in 2019, 2020, remember that's when we were right in the, the heart of uh, COVID, the pandemic then, I said, you know, what else can I do? So I had saved up a little money. I had money left over from my retirement. And I said, you know what? Maybe I will invest in a franchise of some type. And so I started looking at various franchises. Um, and Ace Hardware was one of those franchises that I started looking at. And uh, I met with the folks from Ace, and it really sounded appealing to me. You know, interestingly, Patrick, there was not an Ace Hardware store here in Prince George's County, Maryland. And I thought that was interesting, and I'm not sure why, because, you know, statistically, Prince George's County, Maryland, is the most affluent African-American county in the United States. Impressive. So, I mean, you know, do the math. You know this better than I do. And I said, well, this might be an opportunity. So I decided to open up an Ace Hardware store here in Capitol Heights, Maryland, and it's been very successful, as well as the Ace Handyman brand, which we service our customers. So you come into the store, you know, you buy a ceiling fan. Guess what? We can install that ceiling fan for you for an additional dollar amount. So it's been really great. And what was your process in terms of like deciding on Ace Hardware? Like, did you talk to numerous franchisees? What was that process like? Excellent question. Yes, I did. I, I talked with, I'd say at least maybe 10 or more, maybe 10 to 15 different uh, franchises that I looked at and I, I had conversations with. You know, what sold me on the Ace franchise was the fact that one, location, 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 right? There wasn't an Ace hardware store in anywhere in the area where I'm at here. The closest Ace hardware store was down in Washington, D.C., which is about, I guess, 15 miles from where we are here in Capitol Heights, Maryland. 
Um, so that was one of the things that influenced it. And then secondly, ACE is a co-op, okay? So it's a cooperative. So it's not necessarily the same as your 100% type franchise. The owners of the ACE hardware stores are actually um, on the board of uh, directors for the ACE hardware chain because it is a co-op. So that made a little bit of difference as well. And so after speaking with the folks from ACE and the folks at ACE Handyman Service, I decided that this was the route that I wanted to go. And like I said, we opened up, which is interesting, we opened up right in the uh, middle of COVID, which was a difficult time for a lot of, you, as you well know, Patrick, a lot of businesses went out during that time. Oh, yeah. We opened up during that time, and we did experience some delays in opening up because there was, remember, there was delays with the supply chain as far as getting products, as far as getting shelving and things like that. So we experienced all of that. So we came in. It was a it was a rough start, but glad to say today that we're on smooth sailing right now. From the time you secured the site, how long did it take to open up the doors? You know, it took us a good eight months. Okay. And it wasn't initially supposed to take that long, but because of COVID and, you know, a lot of businesses went through a lot of horrific experiences because of COVID with the supply chain. Nobody could get any supplies. And the company that we had asked to build out our store, you know, with the fixtures and all that kind of good stuff, you know, they were backed up maybe four to five months because what happened was a lot of the shelving was coming from other countries. And because of COVID, a lot of that product just wasn't coming down the supply chain. And what are like kind of reasonable expectations, like financially, whether it's for your store or other stores in the Ace Hardware chain, like you invest such and such amount, like how, what's a reasonable expectation how much you can be making per year from that? Sure. So, you know, every franchise has its own dollar amount, which they require in order to purchase the franchise. So with Ace Hardware stores, um, there was a certain dollar amount that they required, which was about 100,000 fluid um, in cash to open up the Ace Hardware store. And then obviously, you know, you got to go through a bank or I was uh, able to go through the uh, SBA small business lending bank process, which is a good idea. Some of your uh, viewers may want to look into that because it gives you better credit terms. And let me tell you, it comes from experience. It matters when you have better credit terms, longer credit terms. And you're hearing this from somebody that's doing this every day. It really matters when you can stretch out your payments. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why do I say that? Because Business won't always just keep cut. Look, folks are going to knock down the door the first day you open. It's just not going to be that way. It's going to take time to build that business up. The good thing, Patrick, that I learned about the SBA process was that it gave me considerable amount of time to make small payments over a period of one, two, three years until the business could, could get on its feet. So I would highly encourage anybody looking at a franchise, if you're going to get a business loan from a bank or something, Try to see if you can get it through one of the many SBA small business uh, programs. And there's tons of them out there. So I'm pretty sure just about every business can, you know, can probably get into one of those types of programs. And for your SBA loan, was it fixed or is it variable? Good question. It was fixed. And I, that, I had a choice. Good timing. I, yeah, <laughs> I had a choice. You know, you can actually get it either way. You can either have it fixed. I wanted it fixed because I kind of wanted to know exactly what kind of interest I was going to be paying over the next 5, 10, 15 years. Um, and so it worked out really good. So we got a huge loan through the National Cooperative Bank, which is also known as NCB. And they do a lot of community-based uh, business loans. And they make the process very uh, easy for the business person. And then I also got a loan for the Ace Handyman business through another organization, here in Prince George's County, Financial Services Corporation of Prince George's County. Small lender, but they give you small dollar amounts for your ventures, but it definitely helps. Remember this, everything that goes to the bottom line matters. And I'm preaching to the choir, I'm sure, with many of your viewers when I say this. Many don't know that, though. Look, everything goes to the bottom line, whether it's a small loan or a large loan. It's definitely going to help the business. Stretch it out as long as you can. Pay it off. If you can pay it off earlier, that's one other thing, too. Maybe I can just give that quick tip. If you can pay your loan off earlier than expected, make sure that there's no penalty for early payment. 
that matters, uh, folks. It really matters. So you want to make sure that, and then if you can pay it off, and you probably will, a little bit of it before it's due, that helps as well. That helps significantly, actually. And why did you decide to go all in and, and start the Ace hardware as well as the Ace Handyman? Yeah, because, you know, when you think about it, um, you got a hardware store. You have cu customers coming in all day long, wanting different various things for their homes, a lot of DIYers. Now, one other thing you got to keep in mind as well that's really important, your competition, right? So some people may be saying, well, Rod, what about the Home Depots of the world? What about the Lowe's of the world? How did they impact your decision when it came to opening up this particular franchise? That's an excellent question. I'm glad you asked that, Patrick. I had to consider that. Why? Because Home Depot, believe it or not, is about a mile and a half from where my Ace Hardware store is. Lowe's hardware store is about two miles from where my ace heart. So I knew they were going to be somewhat competitors. So how do you win? How do you beat out your large big box competitors? I have the solution. I can tell you how to do it. Customer service, customer service, service customer yeah. service. And I'm not just saying that. If you look at the reviews, when people come into our stores, we always encourage them to go on social media like everybody does these days and post comments about their visit. And I'm actually very proud to say, Patrick, that people have posted so many great comments about the customer service that they get. You know, we don't get customer service these days like we used to. You know what I mean. You know, customer service used to be something that was just expected. And you just don't get that that much anymore. But at our Ace Hardware store, we do. But I got to say, Ace uh, Hardware, they really emphasize that as a brand, customer service. You know, the helpful hardware man or the helpful hardware person, they emphasize that. And it really matters. And I think it really matters to the consumers. And at the end of the day, Patrick, you and I both know the consumers is all that matters. And it, it, your location, like the Ace Hardware, two blocks from where I live, five blocks from my office, it's in Miami Beach. You can't have a Home Depot. You can't have a Lowe's. So they have a, a nice kind of competitive moat where I think it's the only one in the only hardware store in Miami Beach. You have to you have to drive across the bridge like two, three miles to to go to one of those big box chains. Is your Ace Hardware kind of in a unique place where it's there's some foot traffic or it's just your competitors kind of be in it because it's just a smaller footprint? Yes. Excellent question. Our Ace Hardware store is located in a shopping center, right? Now, it's a little unique for the Ace model. Because a lot of the Ace Hardware stores, as many of your viewers and listeners uh, can attest to, a lot of the Ace Hardware stores are kind of on the outskirts of town, kind of like in the rural areas. Our Ace Hardware store is right here in the inner city, Capitol Heights, Maryland, right next to the Southeast DC line. So it's right here in the inner city. Now, I will tell you that the rent is very expensive. <laughs> that's the downside. You want to hear the doom and gloom, ask me about the rent. But this is the reality, right? And that's what I love about these podcasts that you have, Patrick. We can talk about the reality. And, yes. your, and your listeners and your viewers, they want to know what's the real deal. And this is the real deal. You want to be concerned about that rent. If you can get a, a lower rent at a good price, go for it because it matters. What, what would you say in terms of percent of sales? Like how much should rent be? 8% maybe, 7% of sales That's, if you can. Yeah. Ace has a formula, though, actually. Ace Hardware has a formula. So, for example, our particular Ace Hardware store is 13,000 square feet, right? Pretty large. And yeah. there's a formula that they use. We And they actually narrow that formula down to the actual square footage, how much we make per dollar per each square foot of the store. And that matters. And, you know, as a new investor coming into the Ace Hardware brand, this was all new to me. I mean, I was a cop. I don't know anything about that stuff, you know what I mean? But I really learned a lot, and I didn't know that, you know, brands such as Ace Hardware, they actually have the science, it's it down to a science, literally. They can tell you, you need to be making X amount of dollars per square footage based on your total amount of square footage and based on your rent and based on your employees. So, for example, every one of my employees need to sell at least $58 an hour each hour that they're there. Kind of makes sense. And, and then for your new, for the folks that's just looking to get into this, you know, we can maybe on another podcast talk a little bit more about that, but that's really significant. Coming from 
Ace Hardware, the the franchise, or but in reality, all the other franchisees, as it truly is a co op, you just have these key metrics where whether it's square footage, hours worked per employee, are there any other key metrics that that you're checking daily, weekly? How often you receive new product? Now with Ace, it's a little bit different because Ace Hardware is a co op, so a lot of our products come from the Ace warehouse. Okay, we buy from Ace. We don't have to only buy from Ace. We only have to buy 51% of our product uh, in our store has to be from Ace. We can, 49% we can get from anywhere else. But that's one of the key metrics you want to watch. What are you buying and how often are you buying it? And are you buying exactly those things that your customers ask for and want? Now, I got to say, we do pretty well in that area as well. Why do you say that, Rod? Well, I'm glad you asked. The reason I say that is because when our customers come in the store, we always ask them, is there anything in particular that you're looking for that we don't have? That's and great. if we don't have it, we can get it. And you know what, Patrick? That's the advantage of the small franchise hardware store versus the big box. Now, a lot of times people will say, well, I went to Home Depot or I went to Lowe's and they didn't have it and it was nothing they could do. Not the case with Ace Hardware Store. Ace Hardware Store, you come into the store, we can have it there for you probably within the next two to three days. Really fast. And that, that yeah. ties into the customer service full circle. It, exactly. It goes full circle. And you know what? People are looking for that. You know, you remember back in the day, the old neighborhood hardware stores where you can go in and you can talk to Joe about anything and he can tell you how to. You remember this back when you were a kid and we kind of miss that, you know, well, you don't get that from the big box stores at all, but you can get it at the local hardware stores and definitely you can get it at the uh, Ace Hardware stores. And what do you think, you know, you, you talked about the SBA loan. I really appreciate you bringing that, that subject up. I've heard different metrics in terms of like debt servicing. So it's like, imagine to the bottom line, you're making uh, $10,000 a month. What's like a, a comfortable amount that you're paying back the bank? Is it $1,000, $2,000? When is it like too much in, in debt servicing uh, for your business, whether it is a Ace Hardware or any type of franchise? Any type of franchise, yeah. Well, you always want to be careful about how much you're borrowing, okay? And, and you might want to underline that to your viewers. Be careful about how much you're borrowing because you may be able to borrow more than you need. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it because it's going to come back to haunt you. I'm speaking from experience. Take my word for it, okay? Don't borrow. If, just because you can get it don't mean you should take it. And I've had banks come to me and say, here, we're going to give you this dollar amount. No, 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 no. I don't want that because I know at some point I'm going to have to pay that back. And see, here's the, the challenge that you have, Patrick. You know, you got to try to anticipate how business is going to be for the next year, the next two years. And you don't, none of us know that, especially in today's economy. So you want to be very careful about how you spend your dollars. So again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier when I said, try to buy those products that your customers are asking for. Now you can fill in the product mix with a few other things as well, but don't overdo it because what you'll find is that you got a lot of money sitting on the shelf. Remember everything in your store you've paid for. It's sitting on the shelf and it does you no good sitting on the shelf. You want to move that product. There's one particular product. Obviously, I'm not going to mention the product name. We've had this product since the day we opened our door. And <laughs> for the life of me, we cannot move this product. And I've marked it down 50%, 75%. Customers aren't buying it. So I've paid for that product. You see what I mean? So that's tying up a certain dollar amount of my cash flow sitting on the shelf. So that's a good example as to when I say, be careful about what you're buying and don't overbuy. It isn't necessary. How do you manage the employees between the Ace Hardware as well as the Handyman? Excellent question. Again, the hardware store and the Handyman side are two separate entities, right? Ace Handyman Service is doing phenomenally well. I mean, phenomenally well. A lot of these days, you know, folks will call the Ace Hardware store. They'll make a purchase. They'll come by the store. And they want somebody to actually install it for them or they need work done at the house. So to me, it's a marriage made in heaven when it comes to the Ace Hardware Store and the Ace Handyman brand. They work succinctly with each other and they work very well. 
the Ace Handyman brand, actually the um, the manager that I have for the handyman side and the manager that I have for the hardware side, I've given them, I've made them like a, a competition between the two. Who's going to bring in the most money this month, right? Because believe it or not, the handyman side is doing just as well as the hardware store side. And you know what the advantage to the handyman side is? Yeah. It's very low overhead. Yeah. Very low overhead. Think about it. Just well, we people. have the hardware. <laughs> it's just people. Yeah, you got your payroll. And that's basically it. Now, some handyman services here in the United States, some of our Ace Handyman, they don't have an Ace Hardware store that they're in. They're independently operated. So they have the overhead of the rental for the office, or the lease for the office, and lights, and all that kind of good stuff. The advantage for me is that I have a hardware store, and I have a huge hardware store. So the handyman service can actually operate out of the hardware store in the rear. So it works out fine. I don't have that overhead. But I'll tell you, both franchises are really good. But definitely look in, if you really want to make money, look into the Ace Handyman franchise. It's, it's really, and I don't mean, I'm not, this is not a paid announcement or anything. It's really good. It's, it's doing well for us. And Ace Handyman, what percent of your revenue more or less is derived from the hardware store versus like other channels? Yeah, I would say maybe 25%. Okay. So it's not, I, I would imagine 50% plus. So it's pretty diversified. No, it's pretty, yeah. Yeah. It's not as much as you might think. Um, every, you know, we try to steer a lot of our handyman business customers to the hardware store to buy That's the items. But a lot of times they'll say, well, no, I'll get it at Home Depot or I'll get it at Lowe's or I'll get it online or something like that. So that does come into play, but, uh, but it's good. Both work very well together. So if you do have folks that's considering a franchise for the handyman business, definitely consider the hardware store as well. Now, it may take a little bit more money to invest in the hardware store, but the two work well together. And what percent of your time are you spending on these businesses? Now, that's the question of the day. <laughs> you know, I spend maybe, let's say, out of a given week, yeah, maybe two day, two to three days at the hardware store and between the handyman business. I have another business that you talked about earlier where I consult with a lot of major food companies to protect food supply against terrorism, right? I mean, you gotta do something to stay busy, right? Um, <laughs> so I still do that, I just don't do it, as I don't travel as much. And obviously because I have a hardware store, I'm here more, but uh, I spend quite a good, uh, a good amount of time there. Let me just give your viewers one more good piece of advice because this matters for us. Find good people. If you can find a good person and pay them well. I mean, this is really good advice, folks. If you can find good people to be your store manager and your store employees and pay them well. We pay our people very well because it's very competitive these days. Everybody's paying high wages and it's very tough. But if you got to spend money anywhere, I would say spend it on your people. Keep your people. Train your people. That will make the difference at the end of the day. Um, so really focus on your employees and trying to keep your employees because it's very competitive. That will be a challenge for you, but if you pay them well, they'll stay. What's your total headcount between the two companies, between the two ACE franchises? The two ACE franchises, about 26. I have 26 employees. I've got about 18, 18 on the store side and maybe about six or seven on the handyman side. So I imagine you pay well, you're a very positive guy and you have set core values that you have that Ace Hardware has, Ace Handyman, and I'm sure everything yeah. comes together where people stay on. They do, yeah, and we don't lose a lot of people. I pay well, um, but not only that, I mean, I'm really concerned my, about my employees as well. I mean, you know, my I'm very accessible to my employees. Sometimes I wish I wasn't as accessible as I am but I'm very accessible to them and they know that I care about all of them. And at the end of the day, that's what really matters too. I mean, yes, we're in business to make money and we're in business to have our business, but we also care about our people and we care about our community, which is another tidbit that I would give to your viewers, uh, Patrick, is to try to get involved in as many community events as you can. Let the community know you're there. So recently, and I'll just share this with you, I know we're probably running low on time, but recently, there was a situation here in Prince George's County where a small business guy who owns a landscaping company, his business was broken into and someone stole $40,000 worth of tools and equipment from his business, literally putting him out of business, right? 
Well, I saw it on the 10 o'clock news here in the D.C. area. So I reached out <clears throat> to the uh, news folks and they connected me with this guy. Well, we were able to donate not a whole lot. It was $500 in cash. But I also contacted one of my vendors, which is Steel Corporation. You know, Steel is huge with tools. That's your high-end tools, right? And I told Steel what I wanted to do as far as giving, donating some equipment to this guy who was victim of a burglary. And you know what my vendor Steel said? They said, Rod, we love what you're doing. Do whatever you got to do. Just let us know. We'll write it off. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's community. Let's call it community yeah. at the highest level. I mean, who would have thought that a huge worldwide company like Steel would say, do what you got to do in your local community and we'll support you? To me, that makes a difference. Now, you talk about what keeps me attracted to the Ace brand. That's what community is all about. I don't know if you could go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get that same response. The good news is we were able to give this guy $500 in cash and about $2,000 of e in equipment. And he's starting to make a comeback. And we're all happy about it because that's what community is all about. And you know, there's this app called Nextdoor. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's all yeah, over the country. Definitely. We've been blowing up on Nextdoor. People talking about how great you know it is that we did what we did. But the truth is, Patrick, I didn't do it for the publicity. I did it because I really wanted to help this young guy out with his business. And this is what community is supposed to be about. Business, coming together with your neighbors, your, your place of religion, your schools. That's what it's all about, us supporting each other. Yeah, I mean, the most successful brands, whether they're franchises or not, really embrace that. And I've listened to heads of Chick-fil-A, Wawa's, and it's all about like having their place be the center where people feel welcomed and they really want to be there and you're only going to want to be there if you foster a community. It's one of our exactly. core values, foster community. Absolutely. That's right. It's so important. And at the end of the day, it's all about the community and us looking out for each other. So you're, you're very busy. You have two franchises. You have your food security uh, consulting business where you have yes. Major clients, huge companies. Yet you're not, you're not, you're not slowing down. You're you're working with our, our mutual uh, colleague uh, Chuck McKinney at, at Franchise Broker Association, and exploring some other options. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, Chuck McKinney keeps me young because he keeps <laughs> telling me, Rod, you can do this, Rod, you can do that, Rod, do... and I love it because you know one thing I like about the franchise consultant which is something else is another tidbit for your viewers. Make a note of this. Get a franchise consultant. It makes a difference. It really does at the end of the day. And someone like Chuck, who I just happen to know, um, really is, has been so beneficial for me because I can call him at any time about any matter. And if he doesn't know the answer, Patrick, you know what he'll do? He'll get somebody who can get, get me the answer. And that's what I really like. And he's been with me ever since the beginning. That's what I like about a franchise. So it's not like it's just somebody to help you get this business and then you, you'll never see them again. They're with you through thick and thin. That's why a franchise consultant is so important. Get somebody that you can relate to. I call Chuck McKinney my brother. You know, if I'm if the ship's going down, he's going down with me. <laughs> <laughs> but Chuck tells me he's not going to let the ship go down. So we're going to be together. That's what a franchise consultant can do for you. So... Again, as another little tidbit of information that you can really use, get a good franchise consultant, somebody that's on your side, somebody that's on your team. And Rod, when you first went through the process, were you just browsing through online or, or how did you how did you come up with the ACE as well as some comparables? You know, I was just browsing. You know, I Googled it. I Googled franchises. <laughs> you know, like everybody else, I Googled franchises, start reading about it. What would it take? You know, for me... I had saved up a little bit of money because of my other business and then my retirement dollars from the police department. So I had a little bit of money to invest. I didn't want to invest all of it. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to invest all their money. You got to save a little bit in case, you know, the ship does sink. <laughs> That's all I did. And then I just started looking at various ones. I, I reached out to Chuck uh, and I just happened to meet him. I'm not even sure how I met Chuck, but... Uh, you know, we just clicked so well. And he, he just provided. And it, it wasn't even a thing about how much it's going to cost me to use a franchise consultant. Yeah. He never talked about that. All he talked about was me being successful. 
That's all Chuck talked about. He never said, well, it's going to cost you this. And that matters, you know, because a lot of times people will reach out to you as a new business person. They want to say you this, say you that. I can do this. I can do that for you for a price. Never was the case with Chuck. He said, Rod, I want you to be successful. Now, at some point, I told him I'll buy him a hamburger. But, um, <laughs> you know, he loves me and I love him. And that's all that matters. <laughs> Rod, you're, yeah, your your career trajectory is very inspiring. And we've had other folks on the podcast uh, franchisees or even franchise wars where they've made that transition after being very successful 20 years, 25 years in one career, and then pivoting to the next. Do you have any future advice for, for those? Like I've had pro athletes on our, our podcast talk about their transition, uh, teachers on corporate executives. There's a lot of people that use franchising as a means for them to kind of control their own destiny. And sure. I'm curious if you have any uh, concluding thoughts for, for those people that are transitioning. Sure. The main thing I would say is just stay focused on what it is that you want to do. You know, I, I don't want it to sound like a canned response, but live your dreams. You know, if, you, if, you, if your dream is to own a certain franchise, reach out to that franchise. But before you reach out to that franchise, reach out to the franchise consultant. It matters at the end of the day. And I'm not selling anything. Trust me, Chuck didn't even know I was doing this podcast today. <laughs> but reach out to a good franchise consultant because they can really save you money at the end of the day. They can because they can tell you little things that will save you money. Um, but anyway, I would say focus on that and go for it. And don't let anything stop you from achieving whatever goals you've set for yourself, whatever industry you want to get into, whether it's hardware, whether it's the restaurant business. You know, I'm looking at getting into a comedy club business. Just live your dream. And uh and be successful at doing it and always keep the community in mind. That's what's important. Well, Rod, thanks so much for joining. It's been a true pleasure. And I learned from today's conversation. I'm sure many of our, our listeners, uh, all of our listeners have as well. So I just want to thank you again. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll come back anytime. Yeah, I think in a few months, we can. I'm sure there's going to be something that clicks where it's like, let's have, let's have Rod on again. I got to bring him on for this topic. Thank you, Patrick.